speaking of complaining, I think we should just jump right into the hot take. Uh, so let's do it. We're talking about infotainment systems in cars today. And if infotainment system is still a thing, then great. If not, whatever you call all the electronics that controls everything in your vehicle, that's what we're talking about. Specifically, buttons versus screens. Um, you know, buttons and knobs, screens, we've gone back and forth throughout cars. Uh, you've started with sliders and then knobs and then buttons. And now you have like a huge mix. You have Tesla that literally has almost everything except their turn signals and blinkers and, you know, lights on a giant display screen. And then you have brands that are kind of shifting back to the old school, like the you know, BMWs and the Porsches of the world where you're not seeing a lot of screen control at all. So let's get into it. What's the best solution and why? And uh, let's figure it out. I'll, I'll see this. I'm strongly buttons and sliders. Uh, I miss sliders, actually. <laughs> I like, forgot about sliders. Oh, that's sliders. a shirt. I'm strongly buttons <laughs> and sliders. <laughs> <laughs> For your temperature control, like here's, okay, and here's why. I cannot stand the digital readout temperature control as actually telling me to pick like a degree. Like, do I want my temperature 75 or 76 degrees? It just like, I'm like, I know it's not that precise. I just want a slider to hit the general range. I don't know why it's always bugged me. I've had a bunch of cars from, you know, sliders and buttons era to the digital screen stuff. I can't stand screens because you, it's hard to see them while you're driving. Like I feel not super safe, like trying to find like the button and on the screen to push to change the fan speed. I don't like it at all. You know, and the slider, right? It's like a clunk. You know that mm -hmm. it changed. Like mm -hmm. as soon as like your your air conditioning's broken, like you just test the slider. And it's like Dude, nope, still working. So great, so great. So yeah. first of all, I want uh, I would want to request a Ren and Stimpy clip. No, sir, I don't like it. That's what I heard when I saw <laughs> Gallagher talking about that. No, sir, I don't like it. But I want to play devil's advocate and fight for the other side because uh, first of all, <laughs> look. I want buttons and sliders. I'm also team buttons and sliders, but I also want to fight be... for the other side. And then, yeah, I'm going to like retreat immediately. <laughs> look, I, no, I want you to say that for like, buttons and sliders. I'm not going to put a target on my own back. But I am going to play devil's advocate. Uh, I think that that there's definitely a conversation to be had about like cost and manufacturing, which is seems to have the cost of doing anything has skyrocketed uh, profusely in the last several years. So the by putting everything in a screen, you can essentially, you know, you're building one thing, that thing goes in. And then if you need to make adjustments, if you need to update it, theoretically, it's a great solution because you you can adjust that interface. You can uh, remove and replace the whole thing if you need to. You're not making five, six different shapes. And as much as I love buttons, I, I drive an FJ Cruiser. I have the biggest, clunkiest buttons you've ever seen in your life, uh, uh, knobs you've ever seen in your life for adjustment. But they do break. Like they're physical things that that friction breaks down the plastics over time and eventually it gets loose and, and, and rattly. So the, the counterpoint to that is I've yet to meet uh, an automotive company that's good at software. So the problem is it's a good idea, but if you're, if you're not a software company, you can't execute good screen based interfaces. Uh, it's, 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 it's terrible. The first thing that comes to mind for me about this one is uh, when we're talking about like buttons and sliders being positive is when BMW tried to do like that. They still do it, I think, in some cars. At BMW, Audi, I, like they have I these. Drive. The iDrive. And it's, what a terrible system. Like, it you is know so You know who's perfect that system? I, I really think Mazda has, has nailed their infotainment uh, center control. I don't know what they call it, but they use a very similar uh navigation module for it and it it's spot on i love using the one from mazda uh no comment on the latest one from bmw haven't really played with it shout out Lexus to mazda to for just like quietly a... making beautiful like well functioning vehicles yeah forever. they're just so like... underrated mazda yeah, at really an affordable up. price as well yeah sure yeah uh, i just want to call out Moretti. you lost me when you said knobs in an fj cruiser and then breaking Let, let's be real those are never breaking and i highly doubt I you're mean, broken I mean, look, first of all, my FJ goes off road. It's not a girl, like a mall queen, like your forerunner, first of all. Ooh. <laughs> oh, so, dang. So it gets, it gets How dusty and gritty. How did we go off of shots AC fired. control to shot fired? I, I, <laughs> I didn't know this was that kind of podcast, man. Call me out in public. Up. You better be ready to take shots. That's all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, defending Toyota re reliability there. Look, man, Lucas is just confused, Moretti. Calm down, dude. Jeez. 
He's um, in he's in P one. He doesn't know what he's saying. Just you know. <laughs> I'm just so excited to be in P one. I don't know what's happening. I'm, uh, the uh, I, I will say this. I mean, Toyota reliability. Yes, they'll always work, but they certainly don't feel as good as a, a, a newer knob does. Like they they just feel like loose sliders at this point. Whereas they used to have this like click 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 feeling to them. You know, grit gets in there. Time takes over. It's plastic. Whatever. Um, it it just gets loose and 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 it's not as fun. It doesn't that tactile feel that we were talking about. I think Mike brought it up the the click click. Okay, I know I've just gone two clicks without even looking at it. Mine don't do that anymore. They're just loose wheels that I have to <laughs> kind of get in the right position. I mean that's I that's too- how it all started though, right? Yeah. Uh, like the whole idea behind the slider and the knob was to be able to focus on driving and have an easy like yeah. reference of turning to a certain point. I mean, that's like the speedometers. I mean, digital speedometers are the same thing that annoy the heck out of me as well. Cause you just have those reference points in your, in your RPM gauge and your speedometer as that circular kind of motion that somehow is much easier for the human eye to, to like reference. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm really upset. Awesome. With speedometers going away and, and all moving to digital, don't get me wrong, they look really nice. I've seen some really good takes on them recently, but uh, I, I'm personally a little upset with them all disappearing. It's it's a sight to to have an actual physical speedometer in a car. So the digital ones are nice. Yeah, they're very customizable, but I think we're gonna really miss them one day. Yeah, it's tough because I'm I'm I, I, again. I think there's a there's a there's a time and a place for it for the for the cost factor and the the ability to to mess with it, but also. You're right. It's kind of like, I don't, Hey man, don't customize your gauge cluster. You shouldn't be playing around with the video on your, like you should be looking at the road, not, not the, uh, the goat mode animations on the Bronco gauge cluster as you change. It's like, just well, watch where you're going, man. You're going off a cliff. I'm going to make you pop like that. Make you pop like that. Um, but I think a combination really is the, is the, the right solution. Right. So I think Honda started to get it right where they've kept, I, the, the term is infotainment, right? So the infotainment and then um, all that can stay on the screen, but then they've brought AC controls back to the to the buttons and knobs. Yeah. So it's really the 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 combination of the two. I, I think that's a good call out. Honda's got a good mix there. Like, and that's what I've, yeah. I've, my first course in 92 Accord, so going back to knobs and sliders and all that, like that's where sure. I came from, right? And you're like, I love the old 86. We had the push yeah. buttons for the mode. You're like... Yeah. But now as you and get they into made modern, a mistake, like... right? They they didn't, you know, they went all buttons, and but yeah, I feel like Honda is one of the few people that quickly was like, "Oh, you guys don't like that? Okay, well, wh- here's our next sh- take at it." Whereas like Volkswagen's over here, like still yeah. all in on but on touch controls, and it's like, hey, if you want to call out terrible infotainment, though, <laughs> Honda, <laughs> like when it comes to what's on their screen, might sure. well, Honda and Toyota actually both are just like. Like the system's like ten years behind. They look like they're running DOS still. For the new Toyota is pretty good stuff. New Toyota and Lexus is yeah. They've they've done a killer job with the new one. If the new uh, announcement of the Grand Highlander and all of them, they're using. I I don't know what the new generation of it is, but uh, all the Lexus and Toyotas have it. But I agree with you, Gallagher. It used to be terrible. Uh, The new ones, though, props to Toyota. They 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 finally took it. Some people say they finally caught up. Uh, Mm -hmm. Others may say you know they're they're finally you know pushing the envelope a little bit, but. We all know Toyota. They, they they like to be late to the party and make sure it stands the test of time. So, sure. Oh man, you make me want to talk about Toyota and and their hydrogen. But topic welcome for another to the time. Toyota yeah. cast. Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> I I'm honestly cool with all touch screen. Like I I had an aftermarket stereo in my Impala. Now I should say like infotainment, AC buttons. Period. Done. Like I, uh, not up for discussion discussion. Like I don't want to have to look to adjust my settings for the air conditioner. I want to feel a button or a click or something tactile to tell me that I've made a good adjustment, but for the stereo, like I'm good with steering wheel controls and then a touch screen for everything on the radio. And I think the problem is like just the infotainment system itself, not, not like uh, the fact that it's touch screen, just that infotainment by the time like a manufacturer releases it, it's already five years behind on the technology. So it just, it's garbage. It's it's not intuitive or, or fun to interact with. I think there's some exceptions like Tesla. Um, I've seen theirs, it seems to be pretty cool. Um, and CarPlay, like, like CarPlay just broadcasts your phone onto your screen. So you already know how to interact with it. 
without really having to to invest time into looking at your screen and remembering which menu to navigate to or button to push. And fun anecdote about outdated infotainment systems. Hit us with that um, anecdote, bro. Yeah. When when we were in the shop, right? When I was in the shop, I don't know why I said that. When I was in the shop, um, the royal. Uh, it was almost on a monthly basis that a Prius would come in with a cracked infotainment screen. <laughs> and it was always because like the GPS just never worked. Like, <laughs> Like it just was a complete piece of garbage. And then it was because people would give up on it and then they would suction cup their GPS, like their Garmin GPS <laughs> to the screen and instantly crack it. And it'd be like, you owe us $5,000 for your infotainment because you put like a, a Garmin on your screen. Oh really gosh. sorry about that. That's amazing. But, um, I think that's where CarPlay, like things like CarPlay is the move because it's going to like, I, I love the manufacturers that are embracing that. I haven't actually seen a lot of new OEs more because I don't spend time on a lot of new cars anymore. Uh, but I do have an aftermarket head unit with CarPlay in my truck now. And it's it's so awesome because just like you said, Mike, like it's like, no, it's just like running my iPhone. I plug my iPhone in, the music's there, the map's there. The nav I never want it to go away. I yeah. understand from a business perspective, right? Like if you're an automotive OEM, you want to own your digital cluster, right? Like as that's the right business decision of like, this is our space. We want to own it. Is it though? Well, I well, I think it is as a business, but what I'm saying is I don't think it lines up with where we are as uh, consumers, for lack of a better word, because my entire digital life is, you know, right here on my phone, device. Yeah. And so I want my digital life to come with me when I'm in the car. And guess what? None of your infotainment is the same as like my playlist that I already have set up my, <laughs> you know, my up next music and all that stuff. So um, it's the window's been missed. I don't think you can reel it back in. Like my digital yeah, yeah. life already lives yeah. in my pocket. I don't know. You can't compete with it. You I might have to talk to GM. They, they missed that memo somewhere because they're, they're going backwards over here. Foolish. It's foolish. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think Bordeaux nailed it. I, I was on mute earlier trying to like jump in there and I'm like, why well, can no one hear me? Uh, and here we are, but <laughs> These guys I saw you like punching your screen. <laughs> oh, I was like, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> I was just pumping you up, man. I was pumping you up. Uh, All right. Justin believes in this. All right. Cool. Yes. Yes. No, the CarPlay thing. I think that is the that is the key there. It's just like, if you're a manufacturer out there listening to this podcast, give up on infotainment <laughs> systems and just put a screen in there that your phone can plug into and interface everything. I think that one's, they nailed it. You nailed it on that one, uh, Bordeaux. Yeah. Like, if you can... Just you already have that interface. You're already used to it. It's the same in every single vehicle. I mean, we all travel a lot as well, like getting in a rental vehicle and trying to figure out the next infotainment system of every single car. It's a pain sure. in the it's a pain in the, you know, something. Took Please. Us. Uh, took us. Yes. Thank you. Took and uh, if they can just nail that, I mean, even Tesla, you know, can you do CarPlay in Tesla now? I, I forget. No, I you can't. So. Right. Nope. They still have they take their it back custom. Away custom maps i'm sure there's a hack for it but uh rivian and tesla don't do they they have their own uh infotainment own and interface. they will not connect to carplay rivian's then, another good one though they they're actually pretty decent like right i don't know I, it's hard to tell thing, from I mean, like a trailer or whatever like a release video of like they're from their own commercial i'm sure it's polished up but yeah. it looks good it looks yeah, good it, uh, i think someone like a gm uh, i'm gonna keep going in on this i can't believe they they uh, decided to go back on it and say that all new vehicles that they produce, starting with their EVs, will no longer have CarPlay. That's just an announcement. I mean, props. I think it's silly to, to say them. that too, right? Like, why, why go up without having a car to show? Like, without right being like, no software, <laughs> nothing to show. Because we did this. Look how cool this is. We're not going to do CarPlay. Instead, they just went up on a soapbox and they're like, "By the way, we're not doing CarPlay ever again." And it's like, all right, dude. <laughs> Later. I don't know if you saw, but like a couple <laughs> days later, there was an announcement that came out that they hired someone from Apple. I believe they had a couple hires from Apple, and they they followed up with a pretty aggressive announcement of saying, "Hey, look, look who we look who I we feel hired." Like they're like too. They bought into their own Kool Aid too much. They're like, "Yeah, we much. got this Apple guy. We're you know what? I'm going to make an announcement that we're not doing it. Just just that's how fired up I am." And then it's like, "Well, what do you? What are you going to do?" Well, oh, I don't man. know. We're going to wait and see. <laughs> this is clearly a heated topic. <laughs> uh, all right, Zach, give us your yeah. final thoughts on this one, and let's jump into the main the main topic for, for yep, this podcast. I, yeah, I think we're all circling around the same thing. You know, when it comes to temperature environment, it's got to be manual. You got to have the button. There's a time and a place for a button in that tactile, you know, 
if you're driving, you want to drive, not drive by Braille, but you want to adjust your instruments by Braille. Keep your eyes on the road. Um, and then when it comes to kind of the things that are beyond that, the screen is the is the best way to go. It's I haven't I've seen the Mazda infotainment button. I've seen it in action and it looks pretty cool. I just have never used it myself, so I can't say firsthand what I think about it. Shout out to Mazda if you want us to come show us how the thing works. We're down to please. We're yeah, always trying so hard to get free cars, man. I swear. <laughs> I don't even and need shout- a free car. I just want to hang out at the design centers and <laughs> he just wants the like, knob. Hey. That's <laughs> yeah. Just get send the knob. I'll put it on my. Can desk. you just send me the knob. center console of, of a <laughs> Mazda three for my? We're going to deliver that. We're going to order that on eBay for you, Moretti, and just like ship it to your house. So you can have <laughs> like, a little hooking it up to a, tw- to a twelve volt like Odyssey battery under my desk just to get it powered up. Can we do like one last shout out to the Prius, which is what I wanted to do like for half this podcast (laughs) while I was muted, which is for building a really terrible infotainment system. So all of their owners would just punch the screen is what I thought you were going to say. Like they're driving to the left lane at 55 and they're like punching their their Prius screen. America! Alan! The brake! Oh! Seriously, slow the car down! We're pushing the car seat! Okay, I'm coming in. We're coming in! <laughs> but uh but no suction no. cupping oh. your phone to to the screen itself pretty awesome that's yeah really i don't know about prius drivers out on the west coast prius, tri- prius drivers drive fast in north carolina like they're booking no joke. In the left lane i don't yep. i don't know man i can't keep up with them wow uh, i think we gotta end the hot take on the prius that just seems the most appropriate way to, to as we end every hot take as always <laughs> <laughs> always goes back to the prius